it. Let's go. Uh, so this is this is a fun matchup. You know, uh, we're going right into round uh, or turn one here with the Pegasus being played on turn one. One of the things about this matchup is if, if you play any Lorcana deck competitively, you are very familiar with the Ruby Amethyst matchup. And so um, this is a this is a matchup that we see that that Heesing has probably seen over and over again. And I it's a matchup personally that I like uh, as an Emerald Amethyst player. Absolutely, I can see that. Um, this sort of emerald amethyst is, is a bit more snappy, a bit a bit quick on the thing. So it's it's up to kind of Suman to like keep track and kind of keep that um, on hand. I'm looking. I do think it. I think we see that's a brawl. I don't see the Flynn Rider frenemy. I don't think we do have the Sisu there, um, but no answer immediately for that evasive Pegasus, which he will be able to quest with uh, for at least this turn. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure entirely what Suman's running. If she has any evasive in there, um, possibly, most likely not. So um, we'll see how sh she gets to contend with that that little baby that can become kind of a big thing. <laughs> little, little baby Pegasus. I love it so much. Um, this is a card that is unconditionally invasive, unlike the Pascal that we used to see run. Um, right. And, you know, so I talked about last match, the, the kind of game plan for these Emerald Amethyst deck. I, I really think of this as a two-phase game. Phase one is get as much lore as possible early, and you do that with evasive characters, and you do that sometimes with high lore early game characters like Cursed Merfolk, sometimes Flynn Rider, mm -hmm. um, and then even a Jacques on turn three, which is a two-lore character. Now, we do have Peter Pan Shadowhunter, I believe, there. This is, is another evasive card, evasive and rush card. So he's saying now with two lore worth of evasive characters on the board that Suman is going to have to find an answer for, um, or he's saying he's going to continue to drive his lore count uh, in the early game here. Absolutely. Seeing these two evasive on board, it's uh, absolutely something that uh, Suman's going to have to deal with pretty quickly because these, these can absolutely set the tone of the match. I mean, if Suman's not able to interact with them, there's really not much she can do to stop them. Here we are, singing friends from the other side, Peter Pan Shadow there giving um, him a couple, two, or two more cards. Um, the the play-draw uh, dynamic here is really interesting in this matchup to me because I think both these decks uh, in this current meta want to be aggressive in the early game. Yes. Uh, so Sung right now is trying to to be the one that is forcing Suman to respond. Uh, because if, if Suman has the right opening hand with Flynn Rider front of me and with the uh, Sisu Emboldened Warrior there, Suman can really drive her lore total and force Hisung into kind of a more of an offensive role um, as far as board control goes. But here, driving the lore total and forcing, forcing Suman into the, uh, in the response. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely kind of sort of playing on the back foot there. Uh, we have the Bat of Imp Snake and the Sisu. Um, I'm interested to see what Suman's plan might be evolving into now that she hasn't gotten that kind of strong start with the Flynn Rider. All right, it's really the evasive cards that are that are challenged here. Yeah. Yeah, those, those are absolutely going to be a problem. And like you were saying, this Emerald Amethyst, is is very aggressive early on and so it's going to be able to to really push forward and um they tend to make might fall off a little bit towards the end and, and potentially the amethyst ruby it can kind of hop into that with castles and and these bigger cars to be able to to do some real damage and they can get a lot of lore on the board mm. It's true. I, we did see a Brawl go into the Inkwell there. Brawl, a card that could have been used uh, to deal with either of these evasive characters. Instead, going into the Inkwell and choosing to play a Rabbit instead. I'm wondering if Suman has a different plan for her uh, evasive opponents in that case. Yeah. I think, you know, Suman is probably thinking about, um, we're, so we're drawing into more cards, trying to build a card advantage in the mid-game. That's what Amethyst always wants to do. And perhaps trying to force a scenario where um, there's enough lore on the board that um, she can start driving her lore total. Um, and here we're questing out, it looks like. Three lore, moving up to six. Yeah, so definitely, uh, Heesing is definitely doing, you know, what we talked about, trying to push the lore total, get up as high as possible. We have another evasive, another evasive character come down with Sir Hiss. Oh, nice. And because of Peter Pan's uh, ability, all evasive characters do get rushed. So he can go right in there and immediately take out that Madame Mim Snake. Uh, Madame Mim Fox coming down, taking out the Sisu. And... Uh, that board is pretty effectively <laughs> and then, dealt with. <laughs> and quest for two lore. Yeah. Um, oh, 
Yeah, man. This is, uh, just again, just driving, driving the Lord a little bit at a time. Those evasives doing work. Pegasus now, um, I think, has gotten what, four or five lore out of it? So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, this is, this is exactly the plan. I, I do really like this matchup as, a, as an Emerald Amethyst player. I, I kind of know how to play it, and I think um, even... One of the reasons I, I think about this as a two-phase game is anytime we're playing a Ruby deck or any sort of serious control deck, you have to kind of expect to lose control of the board eventually. Your right. opponent has Be Prepared available. When they get to turn six, they start dropping some of their removal options, like the ladies in chairs. Mm -hmm. When you get to turn seven, Be Prepared is an option. And so um, you can plan for it. You can play around it. Um, and here's an interesting uh, mid-game play. We do have the Frenemy come down, which is going to pair well with that Fox. Absolutely. Yeah, um, great in the opening. Further on in the game, but kind of more situational. You, you either kind of wait to see if you have it, and if not, uh, Flynn becomes ink at that point. <laughs> that is true. So Suman here now <laughs> forcing Heesung to, to think about that frenemy or, or risk giving up um, quite a bit of lore. Now, Heesung did have an answer for that fox. There was a goat in hand uh, that Heesung could have played to force that uh, fox from uh, going off, but instead, we're yeah. going to trade the Pegasus into the fox, uh, sitting there with two damage on it, making it vulnerable, and then playing, oh, going aggressive oh, yes. here. Yes, this is a very wide and dangerous board at this point. Those cursed merfolk, uh, their ability to quest for two is 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 creates a problem very quickly that must be dealt with. Absolutely, uh, you know, it, be prepared is an option not this turn but the next turn. Um, but I do think this is a scenario where Hee is indicating, and I think it's it's. Uh, clearly evident, I think it's the right call, that he'd be more than happy to get five lore off of uh, this turn, off those Merfolk and another character, going up to 13 lore. That's really where you want to be going into the late game. Um, and so even if they're removed, I think he sung it in a, in a good position. Absolutely. It's just so aggressive. And with those evasives, he's just been able to really, really keep a really nice presence on this board. And Subin's doing a lot of catch-up. I'm interested to see i feel like she's probably waiting for the be prepared at this point because i don't know if she'll be able to deal with all of these turn by turn that's yeah probably a card that uh, as we drew the rabbits she was hoping to draw into um and yeah it seems like no other answer so they're gonna have six lore on the board there available for he sung um and we'll see if he chooses to drop any more threats on the board knowing that a be prepared is is Oh. He'll find out. <laughs> That's true. So this is a classic example of timing your Ursula Deceiver properly. Um, it's no accident uh, that He Sung is playing this card the turn before Suman's able to play Be Prepared, um, hoping to pick it. If she has it, it's not there. Um, but at the very least, we'll get some information now. And now, able to make the decision about whether he wants to go wide even more here um, and really try to end the game or play more conservatively. Absolutely. Vital intel he just received where he's like, yes, I'm good to go. It's it's not going to be next turn, um, or unless she draws it. But uh, it's it's pretty pretty nice bet. And then playing the Merlin Goat, unless this is it the, with the be prepared. I don't think that we can clear this board the way it needs to be cleared uh, to get out of this. No, it's a tough spot. I mean, we could top deck. Did did we draw already? Um, did I miss yeah. that? Oh, okay, so didn't top deck to be prepared. Um, we've seen crazier things happen, but um, a little bit of removal available there. You can challenge a couple things, so we can certainly buy some time, but um, this is a, a really tough spot. Absolutely. I, I'm doing the mental math for you as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trying to see what we could play, what, what can challenge um, at this point. Um, so I'm interested. Yeah, you can definitely get three challenges here. There's a couple rush characters, or you can play yes. the Madame Medusa. I mm -hmm. think the right play, though, if you want to max, or I wouldn't say the right play. There, there's so many different options. Um, but one play would be to uh, challenge with the rabbit, take out one of those merfolk, and then leverage the fox to draw another card. Instead, we're going to Madame Medusa, the rabbit. We're going to double challenge here, uh, take out the merfolk, uh, which leaves three lore on the board and the Beautiful. goat representing one more when it's removed. So from a scary board down to something a little bit more manageable. Much more manageable, for sure. No, that was, that was really well done. Seaman definitely looked at all of her options, decided the best way she wanted to tackle this, and cut that board in half. <laughs> That's true. So only three lures showing. Um, still a tough spot. This is definitely where Heesung wants to be, um, but uh, able to buy another couple turns here. Yeah. Um, lo looking at his hand, oh, he's questing. Starting with the quest. Which is, I wonder... Going to put uh, another Pegasus down, another a little evasive there, um, which does have Rush with the Peter Pan, but, I mean, you know, he's just a baby. 
he's not ready for that. <laughs> yeah, it, definitely a choice here not to overextend. I think Hsing was thinking, okay, if she, uh, Suman draws the be prepared, I need to be prepared. Hey. Um, and, you know, when you look at the math here, if Suman hasn't seen a be prepared yet with the number of cards we've gone through and four be prepared in the deck, Hsing knows that the odds of drawing one here are getting better and better every single turn. Uh, they're not low. Um, there we are with the Madame Medusa challenging into the goat. And then double challenge into, no, just single challenge into the Ursula. No, double challenge into the Ursula. Okay, good deal. Uh, Lady Trevane coming mm -hmm. out uh, forces uh, opponent to choose a card to banish. Which and poor Pegasus. Yeah, he tried. He did his best. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of the two primary ladies in chairs um, yes. here. You know, Lady Tremaine uh, worked her way out of favor for a little while, uh, but one of the things uh, that gives her an edge on Madame Medusa um, is she has two lore rather than one, so mm -hmm. now a card that can drive uh, Suman's lore total a bit higher if she wants to, but just too much for Suman to overcome there um, yeah. once you get that close to the top, and it uh, looks like a scoop and a victory in game one. Oh, so it looks like we are, uh, have we altered hands already? Nope, we're altering hands now. Yes, um, and Suman will be on the play this time. That is true. So this this changes the dynamic of this a little bit um, because if Suman is able to take her aggressive line with a first turn play, perhaps turn number followers, followed by a front of me, followed by a Sisu, uh, that uh, Hisung, unless Hisung could go an aggressive line as well with Cursed Merfolk and hope to drive the Lord Total high enough that Suman has to respond. But Suman could be the aggressor in this match. And so Hisung is thinking, you know, what do I need to uh, alter my hand into in order to answer that early aggressive line from zoom in because um, yeah. we could see a complete role reversal here if the hands are drawn the right way absolutely and he song has a lot of a lot of really good early aggressive options um so it, it'll be interesting who is able to you know kind of put what what's stronger can come out mm -hmm. yeah, for sure mm -hmm. Yeah, some cards he sings definitely looking for here. He wants uh, to, to try to have a high strength character on turn two, if possible. Right. On the off chance the Sisu isn't there, you want uh, perhaps a snake or even a Sir Hiss uh, to prevent that frenemy from activating. Yes. We do have the Sisu. Uh, I see the Sisu. I'm looking for Flynn. <laughs> and turn a box followers in turn one. I think that's the, the ideal first turn play here. Yeah, excellent. Ooh, big Ursula being ink, but int fun to see her. <laughs> it is, even if only for, for a brief moment. <laughs> for sure. Chernobog v. Chernobog's followers. Mm -hmm. um, zoom in questing with hers, choosing not to vanish it at this point. Now we're going to need it for this snake. <laughs> Gotta bounce it. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> yes. Yes, that Madam and Snake with the 3-3 three, three is a very, very nice two drop. Yeah, so he's saying definitely a little bit more Conservative line here. We're going to take a look. The only card available is Friends from the Other Side. Uh, has to pick a song. Mm -hmm. So he sung trying to take full inventory there and trying to remember what's in Suman's hand. Absolutely. And uh, Friends of the Other Side, sad to see go. There's some great card draw on there. But, I mean, Suman in hand has the Maleficent and um, Merlin Rabbit. So... Some extra card draw there as well. And, and drawing and into the friends. One. Oh, goodness. She's no. good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I mean, this this is a great spot for Suman to be in. So Suman did not get her aggressive opening, but because he sings planning on that aggressive opening being there, um, didn't take the aggressive line himself, Suman has managed to get a couple cards on the board which are very well statted, able to deal with he sung questing with anything other than evasive characters. But importantly, if you look at Suman's hand size, down to three cards, I believe, but mm -hmm. all of those cards are cards that will get Suman extra cards while, um, at least in the case of two of the cards, developing the board. So Suman now is well set up for the mid game to use uh, Maleficent and then the Rabbit friend from the other side to recharge her hand to propel her into the end game. Um, and so not a bad position to be in. Really interesting you talking about how he sung was preparing for something that didn't actually happen. So it's like you know your opponent's deck. Um, it's, it's almost like, oh, I'm not going to say it's a detriment, but it's like you, you wait and see, like, I guess I can't play this. And then you never know if you actually could. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. 
<laughs> uh, here, Sisu here choosing not to quest and sing, instead singing that friend to the other side. And we do have the Flynn Rider, um, and his son currently has nothing oh, on board. Oh, what a, what a choice here. Yeah, no, definitely. You could either play the rabbit, draw some cards, but definitely a, a great play here to play friend of me. Paired with that Sisu, um, now he sung has to figure out how to deal with one of those cards. Yeah. Yeah, because he has... Uh, Many. Six, six cards in hand. <laughs> lots, I mean, probably lots of cards. We'll, we'll use some, but um, I'm looking at his hand. He, I don't see anything that could. No, I mean, the, the fox is a great answer for Sisu, but unfortunately, you need something small to bounce, so you'd have to pair exactly. the fox with a one drop, and I don't see that. Um, Deceiver of All, I, I see on the top there. A fun card, not much use here, but it's worth mentioning because um, I do think it's worked its way out of favor in some of these decks, so it's uh, yes. it's nice to see it run here. Um, but again, not a card that's going to do much work here. But here, the front of me is going to see Sisu at the start of the turn, give three Lord Asuman, and nice. here we see that aggressive role that we were talking about yeah. uh, for this Ruby Amethyst deck. For sure. Um, Asuman top decking a queen's castle oh, which no. is a really nice card to have right now and she's able to move a character over to that as well in quests with uh sisu but now that flynn rider has taken up residence in the queen's castle <laughs> true queen that he is he uh Suman will be able to draw a card with him on the, our next turn. F Flynn Rider is definitely there for shenanigans. Yeah. Flynn Rider never goes, <laughs> Frenemy never goes into a castle without no, being there for some nefarious purpose. Absolutely not. Um. <laughs> taking the magic mirror off the wall or something. Yeah. Um, no, just a fantastic top deck. I mean, there's there's not a lot of answers for Queen's Castle in the Emerald Amethyst deck. Um, you usually have to use a couple cards. For example, pairing a crab with a fox. That is a line which very efficiently moves the Queen's Castle. Um, but not enough ink right here and not uh, one of those key cards, which is the crab. So It looks like we're starting to dink away at it. Little by little. That is true. I, I do see the fox in hand, so perhaps we're going to see the, the fox played uh, to bounce the rabbit and then do some more damage to the castle. Um, but he's sunk definitely in full defense here. Yeah, for sure. That castle is, is, is a lot. But yeah, exactly what you said. Bouncing it back. Mim Fox out, uh, assuming that she will also try to take a chunk out of that. It's possible. I, I do think, you know, I, I have to remember what's in the and no, I wondered if we'd see the fox challenge into the Sisu uh, to remove that Tulor character, yeah. uh, and and if Hisung had another card uh, to pair to match the Flynn strength wise, we don't. Instead, we're going to see uh, three lore worth of character on the board, um, and now Hisung, I think, making a choice about whether to remove the Sisu or doing extra damage to the castle. Yes, yes, and um, though these more aggressive cards like the Cursed Merfolk do have a lot of lore to give. Uh, not great at uh, attacking castles no. or Sisus. No, or anything for that matter. Right. But a threatening card here for, for two reasons. I mean, one reason is is the lore, but to remove it, Suman challenging into it has to discard one of the two cards in hand. Yes. This one of the reasons this is challenging here, and you need to get the rabbit and draw engine going in the mid game, is because your end game, uh, of course, drawing two cards off the castle there, which which is nice. You know, your end game cards, your be prepared, and your ladies and chairs require you to have six, seven ink in hand, and so you have to have enough to be able to ink while while maintaining those. Um, getting that extra card off the castle, though, very very nice. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, having that card draw in this Ruby Amethyst deck, keeping you in the resources you need to well keep control of the board. Yes, and now Suman definitely in the driver's seat, having gotten another three lore off the front of me. Um, we have two and two lore off the castle. We have another two lore we can get with Sisu this turn. Um, and yeah, He Sung really, really has to play offense here. Yeah. I'm interested to see uh, what he chooses to play. I see he has a Jacques there. I have not seen Jacques very much. Jacques, what a fun little card. Um, it definitely has a home in this deck. It does two things for it. One, giving one of your opponent's characters reckless so they can't quest a particular turn. Uh, but then also it has two lore. So in a game where you're the aggressor, getting a 1-4 with two lore on the board feels really nice. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, perfect home in this. And we have a circus. Um, again, we still have Sisu on board. Uh, the castle has a, a good bit of damage on it. Um, but Flynn's still, still surviving. Yeah, so Jacques, uh, a fun line with Jacques here. Uh, Frenemy is clearly happy to sit in the castle and draw cards and pilfer the magic mirror and get three lore a turn. Um, so perhaps making or giving Flynn reckless there so he's guaranteed to be not exerted. Um, well, 
now you need a challengeable target there. Um, yeah, no, it's it's. I take it back. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> yeah, no. So, gosh, I'm just trying to think of outs here um, for He's Sung, and there's just there's there's a few. There's things getting delayed, but um, it's a tough spot to be in. Absolutely. Um, I'm with Flynn Rider. If he is only the character on that side, crazy that he could still be the strongest boy on board. That's true. Flynn Rider sees himself. Um, and <laughs> so we do see the Jacques come down. It's going to yeah. give Reckless to um, Sisu there. Sisu won't be able nice. to quest and has to challenge of Abel. And then the evasive Sir Hiss. So again, Heesung just playing to outs here. But um, yeah. now, so an interesting note here. Let's take how many cards in Heesung's hand? One, two. Oh, we still have, we still have enough to, to overpower the, the Sir Hiss, I think. I do like this move here because when Sisu is forced to attack it has to attack the curse merfolk forcing suman to discard a card which that's fun <laughs> that is true <laughs> that is true and uh gosh but some some fun cards suman has an answer we do have another frenemy um we could rely on those to close out the game yes. um rabbits to draw we could brawl uh, so uh, some options yeah and for every turn that suman uh takes to kind of creep towards uh he sung is able to play pretty wide and have those small but mighty multi-lore cards yeah it, it is it is just a challenge here you know i mentioned before it is a two phase game and critical to phase one in this game is is getting above 10 lore uh, and that really puts you in striking distance for the emerald amethyst player the problem is one of the reasons i call this phase two is phase two is when be prepared comes online on turn seven and so you have that big old reset button that suman has available um so it really prevents you from from going wide here yeah yeah you always have that like gotta save some stuff in case that happens Must be prepared exactly get queen's castle into the inkwell and a rabbit drawing off of that and see if we have the be prepared yep taking a peek um and uh, I, this is probably also a scenario, though, where you go wide, and if you have it, you have it. If you don't, you don't. But that's enough to close out the game. Uh, Frenemy there representing, just unable to get around that Sisu. Uh, so Frenemy representing three lore, Sisu representing another two. Frenemy can then quest. Enjoy today. There's some more 